have Chris Ward presenting uh, with Civic CRM and Drupal. So if we have an applause for Chris. <laughs> and uh, just before we can start, if anyone's got any questions, make sure you grab the mic so we can record it on the podcast. Cool. Thank you. Um, this is going to be predominantly a features tour of what CV CRM does with a little bit of stuff at the end for developers. Um, so if you've seen CV CRM in detail before, some of this may not be new. But firstly, so what is CV CRM? Um, it's, it's big for a start. It's a massive module. I wouldn't, I'd hazard a guess it may be one of the biggest modules out there. Possibly even bigger than Drupal itself. I don't know, I haven't proved that, but it's big. Um, it's pretty memory intensive. Um, it fr crashes our web server quite frequently. <laughs> um, but I am, I am going to get into the positives soon. <laughs> um, it currently integrates with Joomla, Drupal 6 and 7, and there's a WordPress version about to come out, which I'm intrigued by, I must admit. I don't know how that's going to work, but um, we'll be talking Drupal. It, it's its own thing in itself, and it, there actually used to be a standalone version, which um, has been phased out now. So it has its own API. It uses its own templating engine based around Smarty, which is fairly well known. And it has its own massive set of database tables as well. Um, and um, oh, a, lot of, a lot of other things with it, but that's the main components. So what is it? What does, what does CRM stand for anyway? Uh, customer relationship manager, contact relationship manager, client, constituent, depending kind of what sector you're in, really. Um, it's primarily aimed at um, not-for-profit sector, so they tend to stick with contact and constituent, to be honest with you. But in summary, a CRM is for recording contacts and the interactions you have with them and the interactions they have with you. And we'll come into what those interactions can be a bit later. So who uses it or who could use it? So traditionally, it's the community, civic, not-for-profit industries. That's a bad choice of word, but anyway, sector. Uh, but there's nothing stopping anyone else. Um, I've known some people who've used it in the legal profession. Um, you could quite easily change terms and things. It is an open source project after all, if you really wanted to. Big ticket users, the Greens, New Zealand and Australian. Um, and the database admin for the Greens is actually in the room. So if there's any questions about big installations of it, you might be able to help. Don't forget the Liberal Party. Apparently they are moving to it or have moved in some states which is an interesting one. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Voice List, the animal rights charity, Amnesty International, and Wikipedia, I think, use it for some aspect of memberships and donations. So it, it is fairly scalable. As I say, it's pretty resource intensive, but um, everything up to, I've heard, around a million contacts is the biggest installation I've heard of. Um, so it, it can do it. Um, why am I so crazy about it? Um, well. I used it a few years ago and found it OK, but a bit flaky in places. And that was sort of version two. Um, and then with a small organization that I helped run, a small not-for-profit, I tried a newer version. And it was vastly improved. Um, and I found it a lot easier to use and a lot better to use. And then through working through, through some other organizations in the sector, I just sort of discovered all the proprietary systems that um, organizations use and firstly how expensive they are and secondly how locked they are to things and licensing and you know, some systems that remain shall remain nameless you can't get your data out of uh, and all sorts of things and in this sector um, information on people and what they're interested in and how they work with you is like the, the fundamental so to not be able to do what you want with it is just seems a crazy thing. So after that kind of experience, I became the, the CVCRM evangelist I now am. And um, I don't pretend to be the world's biggest expert in it, but I'm just enthusiastic about it. So, <laughs> so um, I may, there may be things that some of you may know better about, but I just like talking about it because, because of those reasons. The community itself is reasonably large. Uh, it's pretty widespread all over the world. There's some core developers in New Zealand, there's some core developers in Europe, in America, in India, and all sorts of places. New functionality gets released fairly regularly. Uh, the big versions, every couple of years. 
there's a lot of um, consultants around uh, the globe that will help you install it. Uh, and often customers ask for particular functionality that then gets put back into core eventually. And it also has this quite nice scheme called the Make It Happen, where a smaller organization could propose an idea they want, like at the moment one about reoccurring events is, is a particular feature. And a bunch of people will say, yeah, we want that too. We'll put in $500 and we'll put in $500. And then the core team will develop it. So there's a, a couple of things like that. And there's also one around integration with um, complete blank accounting package, which name escapes me completely all of a sudden. But um, things like that. So it's a fairly good, a fairly good um, community. Um, the setup is a little more convoluted than a normal module. Um, it doesn't work quite the same way. Um, you basically have to kind of install CVCRM first and then enable the module, which is a bit strange, but it's basically because it has such a big database and does a whole bunch of its own things that I guess the normal installation process just doesn't handle it. And probably also because they have the three different versions, so it enables a little bit of independence. Then there's a plethora of configuration options. Um, Someone earlier said to me they got put off CVCRM because when they installed it and they went to the admin page, there was about 30 things and they just, it was 2 a.m. and they got bored. But uh, <laughs> so, um, things around country currencies, payment processes, it has a whole bundle of payment processes available. Domain and email information, which is fairly important when you start doing activities. Display preferences. The visual editor used, the WYSIWYG editor used on forms. It can either use its own one or it can use the Drupal one if you have custom styles and things set up. Addressing formats, because you can send out physical mail outs through it as well. Um, mapping provider, um, which the mapping kind of fits into all sorts of aspects of it. Permissions, again, it has its own set of permissions. It has its own ACL system, but it also uses some of the Drupal permissions as well. So. There's um, a lot to configure, which is kind of the scariest thing about it, but also the best thing about it, because you can take it so many places. Um, how does it integrate with Drupal? And actually, I think for most CVCRM developers and users, they prefer the Drupal version. So you tend to end up with the best integration. Um, it prime, its prime integration is through a user ID to a contact ID in CVCRM, which we'll come to in a minute. And then that opens up all sorts of other avenues for integration. It integrates with blocks. So there's blocks available that represent a whole bunch of different statistics and interactions. Web form. Um, the web form integration is, um, is, is pretty comprehensive. And you can use that to do all sorts of other things that web form can do, of course. Views is, is very extensive as well on all the various kind of activities you can do with CVCRM. CCK, um, or I guess field in Drupal 7 now. Um, you can actually get contact references as field types into nodes and things like that. Og, organic groups. It um, will pull in members of groups into groups in CVCRM and, and enable you to track what people are doing in the organic groups. Rules as well, so various automated tasks. Ubercart, purchases that people make will appear in their profile. Um, Drush has a bunch of scripts for CVCRM. Uh, Agia has some provisioning. I've not tried it, but it has some provisioning available as well. Um, there's a bunch of SMS modules, which are pretty helpful for campaign type organizations. And then there's a whole load of others that are in various states of development. And some have like two users and some have thousands. So there's a sort of various levels of, 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 uh, of helpfulness. Okay. But what does it actually do? Right. <laughs> I've set up um, a demo site. This is where I let everybody loose on my demo site if they want to, and hope that I don't bring the thing to a crashing halt. But if anyone wants to load that up and have a look around, we can, or I'll just sort of walk through it. And I'll try to do this in as logical method as possible, but I tend to get very excited with features that it can do and go all over the place. So if I lose anybody, let me know. <laughs> um, OK. So this is just a very vanilla installation. When you install CVCRM, you can install a bunch of um, demo 
data. Unfortunately, it's all American focused, so forgive, forgive some of the, the things we see that don't have particular Australian focus. But that said, it can be very easily tailored to any, any um, country. So it usually just gets its own link, but also sits at slash CBCRM. And this is where I see a web server going to halt. That's good. I installed a local version as well, just in case. So we'll be OK. Um, oh, there we go. It's been a little slow. Um, so everyone has a dashboard for a start when you log in. And you can add all sorts of widgets to it. These are the default ones. So you can have just a bunch of the latest information of a variety of things coming into your personal dashboard. Um, the widgets available can be highly customized. And if we get time later, I'll show you how they're created. So for example, I don't know. The problem with the demo information is some of it's like a couple of years old as well. So I can potentially chuck in stuff and nothing will come up because we're nowhere near the year. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a bit of a problem. But um, the bar at the top is the CVCRM bar. Um, if you are a user of admin menu or something like that in Drupal, it sometimes gets in the way. And there is sometimes when you click home here, if you have admin menu, it gives you like a second option. Then you jump back to the Drupal admin menu. And it gets in the way a little bit sometimes. Um, generally works OK. This is just a, um, a search field that starts searching on all sorts of terms, gives you a little summary of whatever matches what you're searching for. Um, but we'll start straight in with the contacts, which is the, the, the core of it. The, these are the, the people that we work with. I'm just going to do a search to bring, bring them up. OK, so this is basically, oh, this is where the resolution is not going to work terribly well. One of the problems I've found with CVSRM is you get these tables that are so wide, some themes, it just pops out the side. <laughs> this could be, I guess, you'll, I guess you'll get the idea, um, hopefully. Um, I don't think. Yeah, we'll make it unreadable, but anyway, <laughs> maybe in one, it's probably enough. Um, so this is basically a result of, of uh, so in this case, a result of contacts. But you can get results of events and results of contributions and all the other various things you can do with CVCRM. Um, you can arrive at this result page in, in numerous ways, and we'll see a few as we go. But basically, whenever you end up at a summary of results, you can perform certain actions. And some of the actions are. Uh, Surprisingly, considering this is just a little menu here, are surprisingly powerful. So I could select all of them, or I could select you know, a certain number, for example. I can select all up the top here, or just particular ones individually. In line, I could also edit the search criteria. This is a very basic search. CV does let you do some incredibly complicated searches if you want to. This is just a very basic search. But just to give a rough idea, so some of the initial actions available are, so we've arrived at this group of people. And I say this, this was just a basic nothing search. But we could have ended up through, you know, tell me how many people donated more than $100 who come from a particular suburb in Queensland for some very particular reason. And you could perform a mail merge or something like that. So it just, you could end up with this list of people in numerous ways. So some of the actions we have are, adding them to events, adding them to groups, um, adding them to households or organizations. And I'll revisit what they mean in a minute. Um, batch updates to their profile, deleting, exporting, which is to CSV. Um, mailing labels, which is potentially very helpful. Merging contacts. Smart groups are like dynamic groups that will automatically update with a particular set of criteria. Print a PDF letter, also pretty helpful. Um, recording particular activities, removing, sending emails, assigning tags. There's a bunch of things there. And if you had one of the SMS modules enabled, it would also potentially include sending them an SMS. So there's a whole bunch of things you can do there once you've arrived at the, um, the search page. Let's just have a look at a, a contact itself. OK. 
So this is when we had our own personal dashboard. This is a contact dashboard. And you can also see similarly up here we have actions and um, not the same options, but some similar options. Also it gives us a vCard option there, which didn't pop up on the other one. Um, so this is a summary of the actions that this contact has, has had with us. I might zoom in a bit here, just because it'll float down there. Um, a summary, which we've got here, what type of contact they are, any tags assigned, their contact details. Um, and this is a, this constituent information. This is an interesting point to, to show. Civi has a massive um, flexibility in that you can create custom fields that can be any kind of data, um, well, not any kind of data, but a lot of types of data, and assigned to contacts. Um, and they can be assigned to profiles, and they can be assigned to all sorts of other um, interactions we have, like events and contributions. But it just, when you see these fields, they're not the ones set in stone, is basically what I'm trying to say. So if you have particular issues or bits of information that are relevant to your organization that you want to capture, you can set that up. This is just the sort of out the box stuff. Um, and then you can even set the way they're displayed. Are they displayed in a pop out box like this, or are they displayed in the tabs at the top? Then we have a summary of their contributions. Mrs. Bill Adams hasn't been very um, forthcoming. Actually, in fact, this is a very bad example to pick because she's done very little. <laughs> she's done very little. Is she? I think you noticed that more than me. Oh, yes, yeah, so we did. Okay. Maybe we'll get someone else then. <laughs> Let's get someone else. <laughs> That's interesting. It's a good case in point of um, a CRM or whatever is is great to a point, but good data is, uh, <laughs> is a whole other conversation. Um, let's go for Chris Adams, why not? Oh, he's dead as well, Jesus, they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, <laughs> third time lucky, please. oh my, what the hell? <laughs> this is just very, this is just very, this is very strange. Why is everybody dead? Thank you. Right, thank God for that. Right, <laughs> they still haven't done very much, but anyway. So, record of contributions, record of pledges, and um, their terms we'll come back to in a later. Records of memberships, events they might have signed up to. So basically, yeah, a summary of things they've done with us. Activities is a very generic term, um, and again, there's some inbuilt ones, and we saw already like print PDF letter, sent a bulk email, attended an event, but we can also create a bunch of custom um, activities. So if we wanted to record every time someone had a phone call with this person, we could. Or if we wanted to record every time they came into the office, we could. We can add custom activities. Um, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't actually phone them, but you know, I'm sure someone could, could build that functionality if they wanted to. <laughs> um, and there's also notes, um, just gen general notes. And it does search notes as well, which is quite helpful. Um, and groups we will come to now. So contacts, uh, again, as I say, the, the, the biggest thing with Civi is it's completely extendable. So when we see an individual is um, one person, and then we have a collection of people. And the different types of individuals and the different types of, of groups of people can all be customized as well. So in this case, it's obviously a school. We've got students, parents, staff, but we could also have um, uh, um, <laughs> anything else. <laughs> Volunteer. Yeah, volunteer, um, paid staff member, um, board member, etc. And they could have different sets of fields attached to that. Yeah, that would, that would come in probably with groups more. Oh, sorry, it was, the question was, can someone be two types of individual? Um, and the answer would be no, because it's their actual record, but we could put them into different groups. That would be some way of doing it, which we'll come to in a minute. And then households and organizations are basically relationships of people. And the relationships can also be configured. So we have household. So it would be father of, wife of, son of, daughter of, etc. 
but we could also have employee of, employer of, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all the relationships can also be configured. Um, that's what I mean. The setup of Civi is the big thing, and once you get going, it's it's kind of a lot easier. So just as a quick, the edit screen obviously looks much the same as the new one, just with information pre-filled. Um, so maybe I should just do it all. Is anyone actually following the demo site? Maybe I should just do it on my local machine. It'd probably be faster. OK. <laughs> Although I will warn you, I have some ridiculous date error constantly on my, and it's not working. That's great. Anyway, maybe we'll have to stick to. Hmm, it's weird. OK, all right. <laughs> Strange. Anyway, all right, we'll stick to this. Um, so here we go. So you've, it's pretty obvious, really. Um, all grouped into these various tabs, which can, again, be configured. Um, greetings, demographics, notes that we want to add to them as we create or edit them, <laughs> groups we want to add them to, tags we want to give them, um, address, contact details. They can have multiple email addresses for work, for home. Um, Likewise with phone numbers and addresses and, and everything. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. Um, so groups, let's have a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gloss over a lot of items here because I could probably talk for hours, but um, groups are, groups obviously are ways of organizing your contacts. And there's two types of groups. And people, and the groups can be both. There's a mailing list. So a group that you send things to. And there's also like a permissions group. So this group of people in the Melbourne group can only access certain contacts, and the people in the Sydney group can only access other contacts, etc. But groups can, can also be both. They can be a mailing group and a permissions group, or one or the other. And oh dear, this is where it all starts to fall down. Ah, there we go. Um, so yeah, it's, they're pretty straightforward, really. Um, again, if I click on contacts, this will look familiar to what we were looking at earlier with the search results. Oh, there's no one in there. This is until I haven't planned this and I'm just clicking randomly on stuff. <laughs> but it presents the list again, like we saw earlier. And then actions can be performed on on people. OK. <laughs> um, oh, what's going on here? But it would present the same, the same type of list of results we had when we first looked. And then we could select people and remove them from the group, add them to another group, send them an email, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and likewise, creating a group is much the same. And yes, people can be a member of all sorts of groups. So that's the group page is pretty straightforward. Um, and you can even have a hierarchy of groups, so subgroups and things like that as well. Um, OK, I will move on from contacts. Contributions, this is kind of the, the big section. Um, the confuse, one of the con there's a few confusing bits of terminology um, I'll go back a year. There's a few bits of confusing terminology with CVCRM in that um, it talks about contributions, but contributions can also be event fees and things like that. So um, whilst here is where you manage things like making donations pages and memberships pages, for some odd sort of reason, money money you've made from events also shows up here, even though you don't manage events from here. It's just like, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, some, you know, it's, a, it's an open source project. Nothing is perfect, of course. But if you have a problem with it, you can change it. So, <laughs> so you get a nice little graph, original graph to begin with, and a summary of recent contributions. So you can see the demo data was added quite a long time ago. Um, and summary of, of what it was. Um, the, the actual management of contributions pages is relatively, um, relatively complex. I will sort of go through it rather quickly because there's a lot of options. But new contribution is not actually making a contribution page. That's actually, you know, someone rings up and says, I want to make 
$50 contribution, so you process it manually on the phone, just that kind of thing. Um, pledges are um, the, actually, maybe, can you answer that one better? It's kind of American style. Yeah. yeah. Pledges is just an American style fundraising thing. It's quite common amongst yep. um, NGOs there where you pledge to you know, pay like $50 a year and it's kind of your pledge and then yep. they kind of follow up your pledge and try and chase you for that money, that kind of thing. Our banks don't allow for that kind of system quite so well here, I don't think. But yeah, yeah. I think we're, I think we're, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the pledge is just around yeah, making a promise to pay money in the future, which you may fundraise from somewhere or you might be waiting for um, a bonus at work to pay for or something like that, but you bind yourself into saying, I will pay it at some point in the future. I don't know why it's not done particularly here. I'm not sure, but it's, uh, it allows for that kind of... And this is an international system. So. so let's have a look at the actual contribution pages, how we make one, just because there's a lot of options. And it's a bit convoluted. I, I personally think maybe the contributions pages should be broken up a bit because you kind of get so many options in the same place for creating so many different types of things, it can be a bit overwhelming. But we'll sort of walk through a test one. Um, so firstly, it gives you a contribution type. Again, these contribution types can be added to to create custom ones. Um, the only real difference between them is how the reporting happens. They don't change the forms massively or anything like that. It's just around reporting, so you can silo out your income streams and see how much you've made in each stream. Um, can people sign up on behalf of organizations, which just gives you options about saying the organization you're a member of, and that creates a record, of course. Introductory message, footer messages, goal amount, and this, give, this then gives you the ability to have one of those nice little like, progress bars um, meeting your goal and also around start dates and end dates. Um, so if you put in a start date and end date, the campaign will only be active for that period of time. Um, and is it active? Well, so you might just be working on things and waiting for text and stuff like that. So again, this is an interface you will see fairly regularly. Um, a settings page with some kind of Ajaxy type tabs across the top where you get and play with settings. So here basically we have things like uh, what people can contribute. Can they only contribute amounts from a predefined list? Can they contribute whatever they like? Is it a one-off payment? Is it regular payments? How regular? What currency? What payment process are you going to use? Can people pay later? So can people send in a check? All that kind of stuff. <laughs> As I say, it, the configuration options in Civic Serum are mind-boggling sometimes. So membership, can people also become a member through this? And then again, is it uh, a membership that renews every year? Can they ha is there a predefined set of memberships? If so, what do they cost? Um, do the payments get split out at checkout? Things like that. Um, yeah, I'm sort of whipping through a lot of these because we'll, we could Time is flying by. <laughs> um, receipting, pretty obvious. Tell a friend. The tell a friend functionality is basically click here, uh, email, tell a friend. It, initially, to me, when I saw that, I thought it seemed a bit defunct. But then I actually noticed that when someone tells a friend, that is recorded in the database that they did that. And the friend they told is also recorded. So it actually has some quite good functionality in some respects. Profiles. Now, you remember I mentioned custom data and that you can add, the problem with Ajax on a slow connection. There we go, right. Um, you can have custom data that can then be attached, like on the initial screen we saw constituent information. So here we can have the opportunity to capture additional information from a predefined set of fields that we want to capture at um, the top of the page, the bottom of the page. Um, premiums I've never seen used very much, but it's that kind of thing like, um, pay 50 bucks, get a free plush toy or something. I've never really seen it used very widely, but it gives you the option for that. The widgets is the, uh, you know, when I was telling you about the progress bar, you can create those. They don't look terribly attractive, but you can always style them yourself and stuff, of course. Um, I'll just show you, oh, there is it, oops. 
just to show you. They're not out of the box, they're not terribly attractive, but just to give you an idea. Although I didn't set any goal amount, so it's not going to look terribly interesting, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, and you, know, you can change the colors basically, or take this code and play with it to your heart's content. And personal campaigns is a little bit like pledges in some respects, in that, say, we have a campaign to raise $50,000 for something, other people go away and say, I'm going to have a tea morning to raise my own little bit of money to go towards that 50000 So that's the personal campaigns. Again, I've not seen anyone use it widely, but it promises some, some, some good functionality. Um, events, to be honest with you, if you had no interest in financial information and just wanted an event registration system in Drupal, you could almost just install Civi and turn everything off apart from the events, because the event system is actually really good too, as is the bulk mailings. Even if you don't even run an organization like this, it, it offers a lot of uh, functionality around events and bulk mailings. Um, so again, we have a summary. It tells us how many people have registered for event, and then on the day we can print out it does actually give you the opportunity to print out a name list or a badge list so you can tick people off if they attended or if they cancelled. So you, know, you get an idea of how involved people are with you. If it's a free event, often a lot of people register but they don't turn up. So it's good to know, you know, well these people were actually serious so we can see that kind of information. It's also a good place to see if maybe your payment process is having some problems because it keeps saying payment pending, things like that. So it's all those kind of statuses. Um, so I might just very quickly, um, you know, maybe not. Maybe they'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, mailings is again is a um, come to the the mailing system is is actually pretty fantastic. I'll go to a draft or maybe. I don't think I loaded up the demo data into this or something because there doesn't seem to be anything anywhere, which is really annoying. Um, but, ah, I haven't set up a mailbox, that's probably why. Okay, this is, uh, this is the problem with winging things sometimes, isn't it? Uh, especially with something as complex as this. But it does allow for bulk mailings. Basically, the way Civi looks at it, and there's no way to override this unless you go and hack the core of it, anything under 50, you can just select people and send them a mailing. And that also has a lot to do with email providers and their spam settings. Anything over 50, you do a bulk mailing. You can schedule them, you can track click-throughs, you can track opens, you can track bounces. Um, all the setup to get that working can be a bit convoluted, but those kind of features you know, that you would actually pay a fair bit of money for with commercial services are all there. Um, and it's, you can do HTML emails, you can put tokens in, mail merge tokens and things like that. So the, the mailing section is, yeah, is almost worth installing alone because there's not many other things that do that without paying money. Um, the campaigns is a, is a slightly new area. I might leave it alone for a little one. It's not the one I've used the most, but it allows for things like surveys and petitions. This is a relatively new section, which is why I haven't, haven't had much dealing with it yet, because um, I was doing similar things through other ways before this was added. Um, again, they're very helpful um, advocacy tools in this sector of getting information about people, getting information for lobbying and, and things like that. Um, and it, everything is tracked, again, against contact records. And the report section, Jesus, there you go. It gives you a rough idea. And that's just the reports that come by default. Um, the, this actually excites most clients when you show them the reports and they go, ooh, because, because that's the kind of stuff that's very important to people is, you know, what actually happened and, and how, how effective were we. Um, so there's a dizzying amount of reports there. Some of them mean absolutely nothing to me. Some of them mean something to me. Uh, they're all very highly configurable. They can be set to be automatically emailed at periodic times. They can be made into widgets, so you can put them on the dashboard, on your personal dashboard. But also, it's relatively easy for anyone with a little bit of, sort of PHP and HTML knowledge to make custom reports if you need to. To be honest with you, these are so configurable, the chances are you won't need to that much, but you can. So on that subject, um, I'll come back to the slideshow and talk a little bit about developing and how you can override it and customize Civi.
So reports is the first and possibly often the initial step that people might do. Um, you can also override all the templates and it does a similar thing to Drupal in that you set a directory where you put your theme overrides, you copy the structure, you copy the file and it uses that overridden copy of the file without affecting the core CV serum. It's very similar to Drupal if anyone's done any Drupal theming. Um, likewise with functions. Um, you can contribute patches, of course, which is a whole bigger ball game. And you can also create extensions. I'll very quickly show you an example here because I did one during the week. So Civi has um, hooks, it's called. So this is the email processor code. But I want you to pay particular attention to this line here. So this is a hook. It's setting up a hook, basically saying at this point, people can intercept the process and do things at this point. So this is basically saying when um, uh, one of the features in CVCRM is you can set up a mailbox where any messages sent to it get automatically processed and added as contacts. So this is saying after you've done that, here's an opportunity for people to add in some custom code. And I had a client who wanted all of them to be added to a particular group. So I just created a very simple Drupal module that overrides that hook and does some custom processing. And that took about half an hour, really. It wasn't very complicated to do. They've just sort of left these hooks in seemingly appropriate places. I don't know who decided they'd be, they were appropriate, but they seem to work. So that's one way. Um, yeah, so it's relatively easy to extend. And then if you want to work on the core, of course, you can. But that's a bigger, a bigger game. So what's next? Um, try it out. It is big. Um, it's, it's pretty overwhelming to begin with. but. Hopefully, I've um, shown a very, very quick overview of some of the features available. Um, I have started a meetup group because I thought it was about time. And the first meetup is the 25th of January in um, Inspire 9 in Richmond. Um, and there is a Sydney group. I don't know if the guy who started is here. Oh, there he is. There we go. That was good. <laughs> so, um, well, we'll see. And we have a member of the um, core team who lives in New Zealand coming. So. She will probably give a lot better talk than I did and be able to tell a lot more about what happens behind the scenes. Um, sorry? Um, Eileen McNaughton. Um, and she did, I think, a lot of the stuff with the Australian Greens, the New Zealand Greens over there and their kind of setups of it. So, yeah, I hope um, I gave you a rough idea of Series RM. It's a massive project. So, <laughs> so, it's, so it's, it's, there's a lot to talk about. But um, any questions leaving that? A lot, of, a lot of potential holes for questions. <laughs> Have you uh, ever used the case management that comes? Ah, it's not installed yep. by default, Th but uh, after years of using it, you know, I had a few clients yep. looking for that. And even being a sysadmin, Unix sysadmin, and using it for years, I just can't figure it out. The, 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 <laughs> so, so I could yeah. use some help, yeah, because it looks great. I've used a little bit. The case management, I didn't, as, as I said, it isn't installed by default, so it wasn't on the menus. It's ba it was basically set up by a particular person back in the past who dealt with things like social work cases. And it was very much set up for that out the box. So, you know, someone is coming in for a review, what happened, come back for another review, um, dealing with these issues, etc. So it's kind of sat there. But anyone who can kind of think about project management and to-do lists and things like that could maybe think, well, you know, that could easily be a lot of other things. And potentially, you can change all the configuration options in it to make it different. You could be a, you know, a bug tracker and things like that. But yeah, the configuration of it, because it was created for such a specific purpose, has never been greatly exploited. And it's probably one of the sections that promises the most, that doesn't have a great deal, and would be very much open for improvement in the future. And maybe, maybe it will be. But yeah, it is a, that is the biggest pain and pain pain to part of, of CV, sorry, because <laughs> it was set up with a very specific purpose. So it's not just you. No, it's not just you at all, no. <laughs> Anyone else? I haven't really uh, worked with it recently. I had a look at it quite a long time ago. My biggest concern is how it sort of like seems to redefine a lot of the way Drupal works. Um, it doesn't seem to embrace perhaps the architecture of Drupal 
in a in a very sort of like deep way. It seems to sort of like hook in and create its own hooks. The male hook, for instance, you know, there is a male subsystem in in Drupal. Uh, is that like an issue with synchronizing and those kinds of things? Um, it's very true. I don't know what. Probably just the way it it got created in that. It was, um, you know, as I say previously, it even had a standalone version. And the, to be honest with you, the Drupal integration is the best out of all of the platforms. Um, but yeah, it does do a lot of its own things. And that's probably why it ends up being so weighty, because you've pretty much got two systems running and they're kind of crossing over at times. Does that cause issues? Um, I've not had any, like, in, in terms of maybe, you know, data integrity or things like that, the only problem I would say is sometimes it crashes the site just because it uses m quite a lot of memory. If you're sending out a massive mailing out and then a thousand people come and click links and stuff like that, it's just resource intensive. So in that way, it can be a problem. But not really. I mean, I know, yeah, it does its things its own way and there's reasons for that, just the way it got developed. And I'm sure the developers would love to make it better, but it, you know, it's a big project. So, and they're more concentrated on getting more features, I suppose, but yeah, it it's got better. Like, that's for sure. They also must be splitting a lot of resources. <laughs> 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 uh, they almost uh, they also must be splitting a lot of resources supporting sort of WordPress yeah. and Drupal, and I mean they need, I assume, a common sort of code base. Yeah, there is a common code base with yeah. the integration bits added on, which is again why it does kind of what you describe. That's another reason because they do have a commonality, and then the additions. Um, that integrate so yeah it um yeah it's not the best but the features it offer i like to hope outweigh how it tramples over drupal a little bit sometimes <laughs> so, so. I, I used to think it did. I am. <laughs> reporting this remember <laughs> i'll just go quickly so I, I used to think it did used to uh duplicate and trample over drupal a lot but having used it more and more i don't think so i no. think it, i think it provides a lot of separate functionality that you just don't have and it really only just connects between the user ID and the contact ID and provided that stays in sync, which sometimes it doesn't, mm. um, uh, then yeah, there's no real duplication of functionality that I see to a great no, extent. No, no, and even for example with the mail stuff, like it's designed for massive bulk yeah. mails, so its mail functions are a bit heavier than Auto, yeah. internal ones. Yeah, and things like that. The guy in the red t-shirt is there. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking of uh, converting the membership use to subscription use for a magazine. I'm just wondering if you've um, got any experience with that. Cause, yeah, I, I think it would work perfectly except for instances where we have gift subscriptions. I'm wondering if there's things like gift memberships. Um, yeah, uh, there, I think, oh, um, do you mean in terms of, um, do you mean in terms of free memberships, or do you mean in terms of um, like uh, one one member or one member oh, giving another member a um, yeah. paying uh, for their subscription? There's the honoree thing. I think that's the yeah. I think that's the is that the honoree? Um, we we using a um, using CVCRM and um, we have have members and, and essentially there, there's a system where whereby somebody can go in and buy a membership for somebody else and you can specify who is buying the membership and have them as a contact and who the membership is going to and have them as a second contact and then you can work all sorts of relationship mag magic whereby the the person who is being given the um, membership can become a a child of the person who's buying it or Various combinations thereof. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I think I think that's the honoree bit that I briefly flew over on the contributions page. I think. Hang on, I'm gonna talk. About <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, there's also the um, optional modules like the member to role sync. And yeah, stuff, yeah, that, which gives you access control and things. That's. I mean, I. I uh, I spoke about some of the integration modules at the beginning, but the sort of default ones are yeah, the synchronization to, um, between uh, roles and member types, in, so Drupal roles and member types, and synchronization between 
um, groups, no, between user groups and roles, yeah. So you, and the synchronization, say sometimes it goes a bit out of whack, but it generally works okay, and it can also be set to when it synchronizes as well. Um, you know, on a cron job, or when someone logs in, or when someone creates the account, and but it, it's generally okay. It matches on email and a few other things, so it generally works, but you sometimes end up with a few duplicates, but every kind of database system ends up with a few duplicates at time, and you see you get a human to come and look at it, unfortunately. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah. So, yeah. uh, I'm just kind of curious. I obviously the the mail module is um, relatively robust to a certain extent, but I'm just curious if you have any experience in integrating with some of the third party mailing applications at all, like MailChimp. yeah, Mailchimp, Campaign Monitor, um, any other kind of mass mailing tool. Not personally, but like. I mean, we, we, we use, with the organization I run, we use um, crit send of the actual mail handler, but that's just a mail server. We, we always, um, our organization uses a thing called Civi SMTP, yeah. and yeah. Um, that's the easiest way to set up your Civi mail, yeah. um, and it's fairly low cost, too. The, and we do lots of bulk mailings of you know, 80,000 yeah, at a time. The, the biggest problem with bulk mailings is not the Civi end, it's the fact that sending a lot of emails has a number of problems in terms of the server doing it in terms of spam, in terms of all sorts of other things. And that's, that's, that's nothing to do with CVCRM per se, but it's a consideration. Also, Civi Mail is fairly uh, difficult to set up on your own, too. Yeah, yeah. There's a few cron jobs that need to be created and things like automated tasks that need to be set up, which the documentation is okay, but there seem to be about four different ways to do it, and no one ever says which one is the best way, and they all seem to work. So, yeah, it can be a bit hit and miss sometimes with any sort of community based project you know, you kind of take your pick of what works for you sometimes. <laughs> Would you be wiser to install this as an intranet rather than on a public web server? Um, it can be both. So you can have, maybe one of the things I didn't really get an opportunity to show was, so you can make it all internal. So only people who see it are staff, it can sit on you know, a separate website, um, it could sit on an internal website, whatever. You know, it can be completely internal, or you can expose all sorts of elements to your wider website or to another website. And you can do that initially with Drupal. You can do it through things like views, of course. So you can put lists of events or um, you know, various other activities that can be act interacted with, or you can get code and in embed it in a completely different. You know, yeah. So, so it's kind of up to you, really. It can be, or it can be all external, or it can be half and half. So, yeah. I, I have an example workflow. When, when somebody joins our organization, they go into an organic group. Yeah. And then yeah. they've got an interface between yeah. OG and Civi CRM, so they yeah. get, in, yeah. get put into a Civi CRM yeah. group at the same time. So there's, there's various integration modules that kind of offer a way to take it out into the wider website if you want it to. So, <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thanks. All right.